Now it's time for the individual ganache tarts. But before I start with the ganache itself, I have to make the crust. I start by measuring a cup and a half of chocolate cookie crumbs, and I simply add to this a quarter cup of melted butter. And I'll just give that a little stir just to coat the crumbs. I have six individual fluted tart pans. They have a removable bottom, which makes them easy to pop out. And I'll just divide the cookie crumble evenly between them. Then, just like making a cheesecake, you press the crumb mixture down and as far up the sides as you can. I've preheated the oven to 350, and these take 10 minutes to set. In the time that it takes to bake the crusts, I can prepare the ganache filling. And it starts with the whipping cream. You need that fat content to properly achieve that velvety texture that a ganache is known for. So I have a cup that I'll bring up to a full simmer. But whenever I'm heating whipping cream, I take care to do it just on medium heat because it does boil up very quickly. So you have to keep an eye on it. And now for the real essence of a chocolate ganache, and that is the chocolate. It's important that you don't use just regular chocolate chips. You need to use what's called couverture chocolate. It melts into desserts beautifully, and it is what makes ganache just so sinfully decadent. What I need is eight ounces of the chocolate. Eight ounces of whipping cream to eight ounces of chocolate. So it's always a one-to-one -one ratio. I'll pour this over top and just let it sit for a second to let the heat of the cream start melting through the chocolate. It's important when you're melting ganache to be gentle with it. And this gentle treatment is to bind the two types of fat, the fat that's in the whipping cream and the cocoa butter fat that's in the chocolate. And you see that by the silky smooth texture of the ganache. At this point, after the ganache is fully blended, you can add additional flavoring if you want. In this case, I'm just gonna add a touch of vanilla. Now my tart shells should be ready to come out of the oven. They do look the same as when they went in the oven. And the nice thing about this particular recipe is you can fill the tart shells while they're still warm. And carefully pour in the center of the tart right to the outside edges. So now that these are filled, they're ready to be chilled down completely to set the ganache. It becomes silky, but a little more firmly set once it goes in the refrigerator. There, and here is a batch already set. Look at that beautiful satin finish you get on top of the tart. That's what happens when you work with the ganache fluid first and then set it up in the fridge. So then just loosen the tart from its shell. And this is lovely all on its own and definitely satisfying. But raspberries are a classic combination with chocolate, and ganache in particular. And there you go, a simple but elegant dessert.